And now over to the U.S. where the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has denied route to a controversial oil pipeline project in North Dakota. Now, the Army said that it will not allow the Dakota Access Pipeline to cross Lake Oahe to complete the route now. The decision is a victory for Native Americans and activists who argue that the pipeline will affect drinking water streams and the life of local tribes. Now, this is while North Dakota Governor Jack Dalrymple said the decision comes or does not resolve the issue and prolongs the dangerous situation of having protesters camped out during cold, wintry weather. Native American tribes in North Dakota have been staging protests against the $3.8 billion project for several months now. Now we're joined uh, by Mr. Scott Bennett out of San Francisco. For more on the story, former uh, war, uh, U.S. Army warfare psychological an analyst. And Mr. Bennett, thanks for joining us on the uh, program. Now, why has it been so difficult for these Native Americans to get any consideration from the U.S. government to avoid the desecration of sacred land and find perhaps another solution for this pipeline? It is certainly one of the most tragic episodes of, of American history that is, has been going on for the last well, since the formation of the country, since before the formation of the country. But the American Indian is a tragic figure that uh, has been betrayed, has been violated, their land stolen, and they were originally put on areas of land as sovereign nations. And legally, they were to be recognized as absolutely sovereign, uh, different countries, if you will, within the United States. And yet, uh, every year, every treaty, every violation, every action has has uh, repeatedly shown that the United States government looks at the American Indian like a like a subhuman species, and it, it's very shameful. the The redeeming quality, of course, is that uh, most well wishing and intelligent Americans are rising up and siding with the American Indians, and siding with their ability to have uh, land rights and their ability to worship in their own uh, ways and and really have uh, a sovereign area that is their own their own government their own land that's outside the authority of the united states of america but of course we know the united states put corporate profit ahead of everything and the militarization of the united states the police state uh tyranny that exists within the united states and the razor wire that is being erected and the abuses uh, that is really a sign of where the United States of America is. I think we're very close to a civil war, and every time you turn on the TV or, or, or look at a newspaper, you're seeing more and more episodes of the American public breaking away from the federal uh, tyranny of the federal government. We saw it in Oregon, and we see it here. Mr. Bennett, do you feel that this uh, military stepping in now is just a temporary like injunction to somehow quell things down, perhaps another okie doke move toward the Native Americans by Washington, or do you think this is the beginning of the end for this pipeline running through that area? Well, I think it's, uh, I, I think the pipeline, they are going to push that through because the, the government really has no soul, and it's calling in the military as a demonstration that it has no soul. It is it is uh, adamant about uh, running roughshod over people. And let's never forget, these are exercises to test their authority, to see if the American public will put up with it or not. So I, there's been a lot of material that have been discussing the entrapment of Americans, the entrapment of military people, for example, military veterans who have went up to Standing Rock to side with the Indians uh, as being a psyop. They've purposely set up entrapments so that people will go up there and then they can be charged with crimes. We saw that at Oregon, where a lot of well-wishing people went up to protest to exercise their constitutional rights, and they were, they were arrested, they were entrapped, uh, and some of them a few months later were set up by uh, crimes of entrapment. So these are these are instruments that the United States federal government uses to entrap and prosecute Americans that affirm their constitutional rights, Americans that stand up for the truth. They're doing it in the alternative media by making these lists of, quote, fake news, and they're doing it by passing legislation within the Congress that is now targeting alternative media as somehow Russian agents and participating in the corruption or the counterintelligence 
uh, against America. I think Press TV is one of the uh, targets of their list, as well as RT. They're adamant against Russia, but they're also adamant against Iran. And the hope is that young people are going to be rising up and replacing these old, senile, angry men in, in Washington politics and replacing their bitterness and their hostility and their prejudices with the hope of optimism and youth. And, and I think Donald Trump is a good, uh, a, a good man that's going to do that. And I hope more people uh, rise up and, and start to affirm a, a definite change in the political winds of the United States. But Sanding Rock, it's a tragedy. It's a very easy tragedy. And it's also a very dangerous precedent because if you allow oil companies to run roughshod over sovereign lands, poison the land, we see that in fracking and other oil technologies, you really are risking the entire health of the United States. And Americans are rising up. You don't have to be a rabid environmentalist to appreciate the purity of the environment and to wishing to, to protect it. The American Indian, of course, has sacred connection to the land. They have a sacred, a sacred humility and a, a sacred spirituality to the land that the American government has blasphemed and violated and done every obscene corruption and uh, tyrannical overreach uh, that is imaginable. And they've done it for 150 years with the wounded knee where American Indians were, were slaughtered by American cavalry. Uh, you, you see it in the wastelands of the reservations where the American Indian has been cornered and turned into a community of drunkards and drug addicts and on permanent welfare. Uh, the, the American Indian Affairs Bureau in Washington, have to, D.C. Uh, has done you no good me. for them. We're going to have to, have to go, to, go to commercials so I have to cut you off there. Sorry. That was Mr. Uh, Scott Bennett. I want to thank you, Mr. Scott Bennett, for uh, joining us here on the program. Joining us out of San Francisco, former U.S. Um, Army officer specializing in psychological warfare. Joining us out of San Francisco, California.